Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, and going to sort this area out, see what it is. This was given to me ages ago, and the chap said it's a 70 centimetres aerial. And I thought, well, that's a bit long for 70 cents. Now, you can't always tell by looking at an aerial. Um, these are very short for two metres. That's about right for two metres. These look more like 70 cents. It could even be nothing to do with amateur radio. I don't know where he got it from. It could be some commercial thing out of amateur radio bands altogether. Um, when we use the Nano VNA, the thing to do is if you set your your sweep, as it's called, right? If we, I think, let's start off, let's think it's a two meter aerial. So we'll set the sweep kind of between either 130, 155 megs or whatever. So we're, we're in there. See if we can get a resonance in there. If you do from, uh, what's this cover? 10 kcs to uh, 1.5 gig or something. It, it's too much, it's too much. It's, there's no good doing it that way. Choose a, a band, if you like. What we do is we'll try it on the two meter band, see what sort of resonance we get, if anything, and what the SWR is. Then, depending on the results, we'll try it on the 70 cents band. Um, so we get a better, better idea. If it's no good there either, then it's somewhere else altogether. Then widen the sweep and try and get an idea. So what we do, we'll put it on the Nano VNA, the H4, that's the four inch screen version. See if we can find out where this resonates. Now I know you can use an SWR meter, so what you would have to do, I mean, for all I know, this could be on, I don't know, 100, say Marine Band, uh, or anywhere, it could be under whatever megs, I don't know. What you could do is get an SWR meter, okay, connect it to a transmitter, and try and find where the minimum SWR is. But uh, to be honest, get rid of that, where do you start? And you can't start transmitting all over the marine band if you think it's a marine band aerial, uh, or it might be somewhere in the aircraft band. You don't want to start transmitting there, you, you know, end up in all sorts of trouble. Right, uh, there's a little bit of setting up to do, first of all, so let's have a look at that. When you first turn on, this is what you'll see, all this stuff here, and you're going to think, what on earth is all this? What's all this? Don't worry, go here, display, trace, get rid of these. We don't want that one, we don't want that one, and we don't want that blue one. We've just got that one, that yellow one, all right? If you then go back, format SWR. So we've made that yellow trace SWR. We don't want any other stuff. We don't want Smith charts and all that lot. Just that SWR. And that is our line up there. You will see the SWR line come down here when we start doing things with it. Go back and back. Markers, we turn them all off and just have one. We only want one marker couple of things before we start. Um, I did say on my last video, one about the Bofang things, I said I'm not going to show you how to use this because there are people more technical than I and they've made some really good videos on YouTube. But I will just show you a couple of bits. Um, turn it on on the top there. I'm going to show you a video clip now and these little ones here, these are, you've got three little connectors, three little sort of end stops. One is open circuit, one is short circuit, and the silvery colour one is the 50 ohm load. What I do, I'll show you the video clip in a second. What I do is put them on there. There's a little coupler to put them on there. All right, because we're going to connect the aerial to there. It's, it's going to have it's going to have that on the end to connect the aerial. All right, when we're ready. So I leave that little bit in there. It won't make much difference at the lower frequencies. So when I say in the in the video clip, connect the open open one. That's the one little one there without a pin in it. Put that on there. Then I say connect the short one, which is the shorted out one there, and then the load. So I thought I'd mention that first. I just put that on there. It also saves keep threading things on and off there. You don't want to spoil that thread. It's got a little cap to protect it. You don't want to keep putting things on to there all the time. Uh, same with the, there's the coupler. 
to the aerial so239 and the little thing there you don't want to keep having to put that directly on there okay so that's why I just use it like that right so let's uh, have a look at the first clip and I'll show you what's going on I don't know how clear this is going to be on the camera but what we do you turn it on okay press anywhere here and you get the menu up right first of all stimulus press that then we have our start frequency well let's start off at one three five megahertz because we reckon that this is a two meter aerial press that again the stop frequency let's go for one five five megahertz right that's that done we've put in the, it says here one three five one five five back to here back cal right I always reset first before we do anything reset it then go into calibrate right we've got open short and load open if I can find the right one this is the you probably can't see that that's the open one so we're going to connect that to the end of the little bit of coax and tap load oh, sorry open that's the open one the next one it says short that's highlighted so find the one that's short circuit which is that one now let's just get that a bit better okay and then short it now says load so we find the load which is there put that on straight I'm wobbling things around press load that's that done take the load off put that back in the box and then done now you can save that let's just save it in zero that's just if you want to recall it later on right so far so good okay I'm now going to connect the aerial now bear in mind you would normally do this you'd stick that on a pole out in the garden in the clear bear in mind that this is surrounded by metal work in here. I've got all this and me here. As you know, if you put an SWR meter onto an aerial and your transmitter and you look at the SWR, if you go near the aerial, it'll change. The SWR meter will flap around all over the place. That really wants to be done outside in the garden. OK, as you probably know as well, you can undo the little Allen screws there and adjust the length to get the SWR just right. Right, we can now see on here, I've connected I've connected the aerial, okay. So let's go back here, go back, uh, where are we, back here. Search, minimum, and there's the minimum. So it's 141 megs, and the SWR is 1.93. I thought the SWR, almost 2 to 1, was rather high. Now bear in mind that an aerial might have several different points where it appears to be resonant um, so you've got to find the correct one this is a bit of an awkward aerial because I mean normally you'd know what it is uh, the chap that I got it from he said it was 70 sems <coughs> he also said it might be two meters or both <laughs> so you can't looking at that it's two meters but looking at these it's 70 sems these are too short for uh, ground plane for two meters they're too short so I checked it on 70 sems and I found the SWR in here again with all the surrounding bits and pieces was uh, what was it, it was 1.3 to 1 no one yeah almost 1 1.3 to 1 on 435 megs I think it was so it looks like it's a 70 centimeter aerial uh, as I say you will have other uh, dips in the SWR here and there on other frequencies to be like harmonics or wherever so you've got to find the correct one what I did take it out in the garden took that with me put it on a aluminium pole only about six foot and checked again and it's 70 sems it was good it was 435 megs so that's more or less is it the middle of the band I forget and the SWR was uh, one point was it one point one point one five to one so that's not bad 1.15 that's not bad at all but that gives you an idea of how to 
used in anno VNA. There are, you could use the Smith chart on here. There's a Smith chart. Have you heard of that? Now, I'm not going to show you how to use the Smith chart for one very good reason. I've no idea how to use it myself. <laughs> I know what it is. I know more or less what the Smith chart does, what it shows you. Uh, and I will probably get into using that at some later stage. But for now, um, as this is just to introduce you to the nano VNA, I don't want to get into all that. If you want, if you are not a beginner, you're not new to the hobby. If you're an old hand and you're a highly technical scientist type mathematician, this video will be totally useless for you. But there are, as I've said before, videos on YouTube, loads of other videos on YouTube where they go into the Smith chart, the mathematics, the whole thing. It's quite incredible. I've made some notes. What I did, here we are. Oh, I did have some notes, they're gone. What I did was, on the 14 meg amateur band, okay, I tuned everything up into my aerial, loaded everything up into the aerial, got the SWR one to one. I then got the Nano VNA and put this in place of my receiver. All right, so I kept the ATU in line, the SWR meter, kept it all in line and put that on there to see what the resonant frequency was. Now on the 14 meg amateur band, where was I? 14.3 exactly got the ATU SWR one to one I put this on and it said the aerial is resonant at exactly 14.3 so that's good that's good there was a forum I read where a chap said my SWR meter reads a little bit different the SWR meter will say one to one I loaded it all up one to one put this on it it's about 1.2 to one I found the same thing and as people said on this forum SWR meters aren't always that accurate uh, so, you know, I wouldn't worry if your SWR meter doesn't coincide with this. But this is really good. I heard a chap the other day on 40 meter amateur band. He was saying that he bought one of these. Now, this is a shame. He bought one of these. He was telling his friend and he said he took it out of the box, turned it on. And after about an hour, turned it off, put it back in the box and stuck it in a drawer. And he said it's been there ever since. What a shame. He can't use it. Uh, another chap said to me, oh, it's beyond me. It's, uh, it's above me. I can't get into that sort of thing. You know, this is highly technical stuff. No, it's not. I'm not highly technical, as you probably know from all my videos. I'm far from highly technical. But I'm, I managed to use it. And you can see how straightforward it is. All right, it's a bit of a palaver. You've got to set it up each time. Uh, you know, you've got to connect each of the little little caps on the end the open circuit one the short circuit one the 50 ohm load you've got to do that to give this a starting point it wants to know first of all is it 50 ohms we're dealing with well it is all aerials all transceivers a socket on the back they're all 50 ohms aerials you buy are 50 ohms another good thing to do with this so you've got your mag mount on your car and your quarter wave whip you know Say it's for CB, for example, CB. Well, instead of having to, you know how you adjust it up and down, loosen the little Allen screws, adjust it up and down for the best SWR. Instead of having to use an SWR meter, keep going back into the car, transmit. No, that's not quite right. Go out, adjust the length, back in the car, transmit. Hang on, that's the other way I want to go. Use this. Uh, there's no SWR meter. There's no transmitting. You just adjust the thing, the length of the whip, for the best the, the minimum SWR reading on here, the resonant frequency. Set it up in the middle of the CB band or wherever you are. If you're on 10 meters, set it up on, say, I don't know, 20, 28, 600 or something like that. Get it just right for that. Or 2 meters, 70 centimeters, wherever you are. You get it just right. It saves all that business. So there we are. Hope that's been of some help. I bought all these. These are extra sort of adapters and things, various. SO239 to that or to that or to this. Um, you get a, you get one with it, but I bought some more and uh, found a cigar box or whatever it is. No, it's not a cigar box. Anyway, there we are. I hope that's helped. Yeah, this aerial, these these are about a quarter wave on 70 sems. So this isn't a quarter wave. This is obviously something bigger, but um, it is a 70 sems aerial. 
I'll probably put that back out in the garden on the pole. It's a spare one. It's just a spare. I don't need it, but I'll probably stick it out there because it looks good. Okay, thanks for watching as always. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye for now.